And we are live! Good day, good day, everyone. My name is Thunbird One. I am personal podcast of Dark Angels Battle Brother. I have not figured out a name for the podcast, so you know what? I'll go for a name that has been, that has been, uh, well, foretold to me a long time ago. We are going to call it the Thuncast. I hope you all are having a wonderful day. And today, we are having a special guest on here. A man who is actually in the Dark Angels himself. Introducing Soloria. Oh, hey. Um, thank you for having me here, uh, Thunburn. I've been um, watching your logs probably ever since log 20, I'd say. Um, and I'm excited and um, glad to be here. Thank you for having me. I'm glad to have you here also. You know, there are many people here who would often want to dis display their personal opinion on the IOM experience. So, with me keeping a promise from since when I was in my MT days, I did promise when I was a Dark Angel, now Space Marine, that I would do the podcast. So do note that these podcasts will not be edited in order for us to get the full funny, and knowledgeable experience of a podcast, plus a learning experience on my part. So, let us continue with the first question of the day for the podcast. So, are you capable of answering these questions? Yeah, yeah, I'll, I'll, uh, I'll answer them to the best of my ability, for sure. All right, so, the first question being, how did you find IOM? Oh, that's a good question. Um, so I would say um, I first discovered this Imperium way back, and I would say early 2017. Um, uh, and I kind of it was just one of those things. I've always kind of been a fan of. I wouldn't say kind of. I've been a fan of 40k at least since some um, 2015. But I wasn't aware of a uh, a 40k genre slash community on Roblox. At the time, and I mean, I feel like at that time there wasn't really a genre. It was more of just a bunch of uh, different Imperium of Man's kind of scattered about, and like I, I mainly discovered, I stumbled upon this one by accident. Um, um, um. I mean, is uh, the Emperor? His name then was Jonathan Faro, but now you probably know him as Lysen. But that at the time when I joined, this was like a small Imperium. Maybe it had maybe two hundred, three hundred people. Um, very small, and it wasn't really, it didn't really have its own genre yet. It was kind of like its own self-sustaining um, Imperium. And at least from what I remember during that time, there were several other, I would say, um, competing Imperiums in the genre that, uh, and I would, when I say genre, I mean the entire, like, 40k adapt, uh, Roblox uh, adaptation, like, type of, like, uh, vibe. Um, not like the Dark Millennium versus the Far Future that we have now. Um, there was a lot of other bigger Imperiums that were out there that, um, technically, at, on paper, if you looked at the time period, and just in that, 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 that kind of, um, that section of time, they technically, on paper, were more successful, they had more people, they had better developers, but, um, I think one of the things that kept me in this group was, um, out of all, out of at least all the other Imperiums that I saw visually, um, they had no, um, like they had, yeah, they had all the best technology at the time. They had all the best developers. They had all the coolest looking maps, but like there wasn't really a sense of like a, a community or I would say like, it just didn't feel like there was any passion. Um, and I know it's like, uh, that can seem kind of strange, but like I, when I first came to this Imperium, I, I, I noticed immediately that like, oh, like the people who, who are here, they care about the group in general. Um, and so I, uh, I, I, I was in the group for about a year. I started in the, in the, um, the military as a guardsman. I eventually ended up working my way up to, um, I think the Ultramarines were running at that time. And if I remember correctly, that was when there was a Primarch. I think it was Roboot, Roboot Gilliman. I don't remember the person who was doing it, but they had the whole morph and everything. Um, and then I would say halfway through my time, I would say, I would say maybe four or five months into the Imperium, um, uh, John didn't really know, or I mean, they 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 had developers, but their their mechanicus wasn't kind of as as expansive as the one that we have now. Even though ours is still relatively um a, a, 
a tight knit group of individuals. But I will say that um, um, John didn't realize that I had experience with a model building because before um, the Imperium, I was um, I, I I would I would say that I was I was a part of the um, the Roblox Roblox's um, car community, where that that's pretty expansive and it still kind of exists, but it's not really what it used to be. And so I learned through just like trial and error how to like build models on um build pretty relatively pretty detailed models on Roblox Studio and then export them to Blender, turn them to meshes and then reduce the part count and whatnot. And so um I offered my I offered to like, hey, like like I just started with really basic stuff. Like I think my first the first model that I built for um John or the Emperor Lysander. I'll I'll call him Lysander from now on. Uh, first model I built for Lysander was literally the Imperial Aquila, like, I, but I ended up like literally tracing it from like a image that I imported into um, Roblox Studio, and he was genuinely surprised by the um, the detail and the accuracy. And then he, after that, he just started asking me like, "Hey, try building this or try building that." And then it got to the point where like I was building, such as I was just building vehicles. And it was mostly like I think I built like a Lehman Rust tank, a Camara, some other stuff. But like my my expertise in developing was strictly model building. I didn't, I still don't know how to script, and I generally did it well enough for like the the parts that are essentially the vehicles that I would create. After they were done, they were relatively accurate and they were low parts, so they weren't. You know, if you would put them in a server as a prop, it wouldn't lag the server to death. Um, I ended up leaving after about a year because um towards i would say the last two months i was in the group i was like pretty much halfway through my freshman year of college and uh, i was uh, i was double majoring at the time in electrical engineering and audio engineering so like uh, i nearly flunked out of my first semester of college and i was just like okay i can't focus on being like a stem major um and also focus on the imperium in a way that gonna be a like a a helpful presence like i i had to like you know like kind of take a break from roblox for a couple of years and focus on college because um um i mean i listen whoever goes to college like that should be your focus um not to say that this group isn't important but it's more like prior priorities during the the time that you're there and so i ended up leaving and i i'm pretty sure i let john know um the lysander the emperor i let him know and we we, can, we we I would say from like 2017 until like three months ago when I rejoined, I uh, we like we kept in touch briefly, but there were spans of time where like I didn't really keep in touch with him, and I had no idea what was going on with this Imperium. I would see that it still existed, and I was surprised. I mean, when I ended up rejoining in like officially rejoining in like February of 2023, beginning of February, I was amazed. Like it's it's. It's really inspiring to see how um, um, how what we're seeing now with the Imperium is a I would say a dream and a vision that's been or that has been orchestrated years ago. Like it's so it's so cool to see that there's now a um, the, that the Imperium man is stronger than ever, larger than it ever was, has more activity than it really ever was, and it has a thriving community in it. Uh, it it kind of created its own genre. And this is like it's so cool to like see see essentially Lysander's plan and whoever else was involved. I'm just gonna say the Triumviratus, um, whoever else was involved to orchestrate this whole thing, and other people who um, I don't know their names, but I'm sure a lot of people pitched in help. It's so inspiring to see that somebody's dream that they said that they were gonna do five years ago kind of ends up coming to fruition in a way that you never anticipated. So um, it's also primarily the reason why I've stayed. I'm now also now no longer in college, so I don't have to split my my free time between the Imperium and outside, uh, outside of it in the real world. So um, yeah, pretty much. That's how. That's <laughs> uh, it's a, it, short story short. I mean, long story short. That that is essentially how I discovered the Imperium way back, like 2017, when I was like a senior in high school for the most part. Incredible first. First a man who joins, then a full-on builder for the Emperor himself, gone through trials and tribulations trying to obtain, well, you know what, go for the obtaining stuff, trying to obtain college, and finally came back in all of stasis. But, 
You might have to keep this short, but why did you not go on the path of the, well, the engine, well, sorry, the Adeptus Mechanicus back in the day? Well, now, at this point. Um, that's a good question. Um, so at that time, I technically was a part of the Mechanicus. I think at one point I was either a tech priest. And then I eventually ended up becoming an ultramarine, but then I was a tech marine. So it was like I was a I was a space marine, but then I also was a developer. So then um, they're just like, okay, let's just make him a tech marine. So I I, th- I, w- I kind of walked around in a bit of like a 2017 era blocky space marine ultramarine morph with all the freaking tentacle like like robotic arms sticking out of the power pack and everything. So um, so yeah, that was about as far as I went into. Um, a sort of development, quote unquote, development developer career into Mechanicus. And to answer your question too, the reason why I'm also not in Mechanicus now is that like I haven't really done any model building since that, since I would say 2018. So it's not necessarily that I don't know how to do it. Um, it's more so that my way of doing it might just be very outdated with the current um, methods that a lot of people are using. Um, and so. Um, I mean, I don't think it would be an issue for me to like actually finally learn how to officially build models within Blender. But I figured like, why don't I just do what I, I can now and, you know, and just see how I can help the Imperium in any capacity. Um, that doesn't involve developing. Well, that is the better way to go out. Sometimes we often forget our knowledge of how to create and it takes a long, gruesome progress of trying to come back to life. Trying to come back to gaming is just another, well, trial that you have to face. But a good emphasis on the first question. How did you find IOM? Good one. The second question. What was your journey like in IOM? Talking about journey would mean talking about the ranks, the uh, medals, the... The sort of trial and tribulation that you had to achieve just so you can reach to Battle Battle Brother. Or just now, Uh, Scout, I believe? Yeah, I'll get into that a little bit later. I mean, and and I I just want to explain, uh, ask you for clarification. Do you mean like now? Like now or like before? Like before. You, like, let me just show you a prime example. Person, like me, has simply joined the community. Started off as a guardsman, then heavy weapon specialist for the Death Corps and Creed, then MT with Grenadier recruit, Bolgren, I mean Ogren, Bolgren, then going through the process of the Battle Brother, of the Battle Brothers of the Dark Angels, Aspirant, Neophyte, then Battle Brother. Those are the prime examples. So, what was the okay. journey like? And can you describe the roles and the um, well, the ranks that you've gone through? Yeah, actually, I'll try to stick to um the last I would say twelve weeks, since um, you know I my you know my time in the Imperium five years ago was five years ago, so my memory isn't um photographic or exact. So I'll stick. I'll stay relevant to uh, this year. Um, well. I pretty much just joined, I rejoined um, um, Lysander's Imperium and went through the whole, you know, the Guardsman entrance exam. And I, I, I originally, I was still kind of on the fence whether I wanted to pursue another, um, a, to pursue a, a quote unquote, a career in a, a Roblox genre type of um, community 40k experience. And um so yeah, I, I would say this like this was like the first week of February of this year, and I just showed up, did the the did the did the essentially essentially the um. I did the uh, the entrance exam, the obby, you know, where you go from white shield to guardsman. I picked Cadia and I stuck with it, and I yeah, I was just a regular guardsman, just like anybody else who joins. And um, well, I think what I was taken aback was how act active how active the um the community was and also um one thing i noticed was like how this is my first time seeing caldega um it was also like i was like wow this is a very well done map um we've had i've seen maps that we've done before and this one by far was probably the largest map i've seen i've seen um the emperor i mean the imperium make develop 
And it just seems like they put a decent amount of attention to detail to making it a, um, um, a very just a diverse map with different locations. And this was back when the Caudega was much bigger than it is now. And this was also on the old gun system with the latency and all that. Um, but um, I'm getting off track. Uh, so I would say my second day as a guardsman, I ended up meeting Colin Commander. And this was back when he was uh, Lord Tempester. Pretty much, you know, uh, we all know Colin. He wears many hats, yeah. regimental command, but then does a lot of stuff on the back end. Mm-hmm. And is, um, is, uh, he's, uh, he's, he's very hopeful. To the Imperium in general, yeah. um, I ended up. Yeah, I just like ended up. Uh, I, he was probably one of the only people who took time out of his day to actually just like you know super approachable, super friendly, and he was just like showing me like a tour of the map and everything, and like um, pretty much. I think my second day as a guardsman, clone, clone commander at the time, he was like, "Hey, like, do you want?" He was like. Talking, he was trying to figure out like, what are my goals and aspirations. And at the time, I was like, I'm not 100 percent sure. And then he was just like, Hey, like, would you, uh, would you like to join? Um, would you like to join Tempestus and be a Kazakh and recruit? And he was just like, You seem like mature and relatively a nice guy. And um, and this was also during the time when um, um, five years ago when I was in this Imperium, I went under a different username, and so. Um, when I joined again and I had the username, I think back then I was, um, it was Soraya, Saria, whatever, what have you. Um, I, I intentionally was trying to join and I didn't think that anybody would remember me, but like, I, I completely forgotten that, like, um, I have, I've literally been on Lysander's friend list at least since 2017. So like, you know, that in-game Roblox function where it says like, oh, your quote unquote, your friend has joined the game. So I think at some point the emperor just so happened to be there. It was a late night. And he was like, wait, he, he like, he saw me. And then he was like, wait, what are you doing here? And then he, he, he teleported over to me using the admin command. And then I, he saw me talking to Quone. And this was like halfway through the conversation when Quone was like asking me if I wanted to be in Tempestus. And then emperor was like, wait, Quone, do you know who this is? And then he was like, what, who is this? He's like, he, he was like, this person here was one of our first developers and he like served in the ultramarines like with distinction for at least a year and i was like i was like oh i was like i this is like literally it's like a five-year gap i probably hadn't spoken to the emperor in three years um so it was i was like oh shit he still remembers me um and then so the emperor kind of vouched for me and and Colin was like word okay and then literally the next day it was a kazakh and recruit and but still like I can tell you right now, I definitely probably would eventually have gotten to Battle Brother, but I I don't think I would have gotten it gotten to it this soon without clone, you know, clone commander, clone having faith in me and saying like, you know, hey, like I see promising you. Um, looks like you you have a bright you know like a bright future ahead of you in this group. Um, and he put faith in me at the time, and so ever since then I've tried to, um, I don't know. He's in general. There's a couple of people I look up to and admire. But Clone Commander is definitely one of my big uh, role models in terms of the way he carries himself and presents himself in the genre as a whole. And that's, uh, 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 I would say that's a, that's a, that's a persona that I, I aim to strive for um, at all times. Um, but, you know, we're human beings, we're not perfect, so we falter. But I, that's, what, that's something that I try to strive for. How true. Man, from trial and tribulation... The man who simply came back and find, and got noticed by the Emperor himself, told that was it was well, once a developer, but got vouched for. Nothing wrong with that, but beyond everything else, to reach upon this far in a matter of weeks is really just impressive. After that, you must have had like a whole lot of stuff to do, but was it any more of life struggle in a way? No, I mean, I would say from the time I joined this group to the time I became an aspirant, that was probably the first week of February to the first week of, I would say, April. Um, yeah, so that's about eight, eight, nine weeks. And I wouldn't, I wouldn't, it wasn't like I shot up through the ranks very fast, but I was active enough for like I pretty much got promoted roughly every six to seven days. And within my first six weeks, I was um, a Kazakh and corporal. And then we, I was a Kazakh and corporal for about a week, hosted events. When I, was a, I was an NCO. And then um, 
uh, uh, that was when um I think um uh my at the time my Kazakhstan sergeant at the time I I think it was I think it was Iraqi yeah, it was Iraqi hero Iraqi hero was my Kazakhstan sergeant pretty much from the time uh for at least three maybe I would say three weeks um I, Iraqi hero definitely he ended up being chosen for aspirancy and the the sergeant spot was vacant and so I was moved up to replace him and I was a sergeant for about two weeks and but at the end of my second week that's when my aspirancy was announced and I actually I, I had filled out an, 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 an inactivity notice for that that Saturday for that inspection because um I had I had some I had an event I had to attend to in real life so I couldn't have, uh, I couldn't uh, go so <laughs> imagine my surprise when like I'm literally like my you know my phone's blowing up my discord's blowing up I'm looking at my phone I'm like so many people are saying congratulations like literally, I think there's probably unless there at least was five to ten people in my DMs saying congratulations, congratulations, and I was like, wait, what? What, what happened? What did I do? Like I was very confused. And now I remember, you were the guy that weren't able to make it, and therefore yeah, 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 yeah. It was just a full meme going on where we took out to DM the guy and just congratulate him. Those no, yeah, 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 yeah. yeah. Don't. I remember you when I was um, I believe it was an old, I believe it was an old friend, the time when I at least. Dang, man, that was truly impressive upon your great journey. <laughs> no, it was funny because it was like, I was surprised by how many people, like, mm -hmm. personally congratulated me in DMs. They were like, oh, like, and, and many more people did so in, like, open comms, mm -hmm. on duty and off duty. And so, like, I was like, wait, for the first five minutes, I was, like, confused. I was like, why are 10 people DMing me saying congratulations? Wow. I was very confused. And then... And then I got the message. They're like, "You got chosen for aspirancy." I was like, "No way, really!" <laughs> I was like, I, "I thought I, I, you know, it's, um, it's, I, I had no idea." Like, the, I mean, I would say, and this was back when Ultra. No, this was this wasn't. This was after Ultra Means ended, and DA was maybe three weeks until it's until it's um since it got found. Yeah, I, um, I would say I like two to three weeks. Yeah, I remember that time of the. I remember that time when the when the Dark Angels was trying to build up and they were trying to recruit people. But beyond all of that, this is really incredible. And no, it, really, it was very it interesting, really, and it really actually shows how the community really beloves. It's just many people who even can get just ascended by the lowest of rank or even the highest. People can actually show your motivate well encouragement motivation to other people even though that they were unlikely that shows that they're determined and will to at least pursue well their path in general but all in all we all we all inside the iom community care about one another and therefore we would sometimes feel pain of other people and they would do the same so in general you have joined a wondrous community my dear friend no, honestly, I uh, I've been in. I would say I've been in groups like this before. Uh, before IOM, I was heavy in the UNSC genre between like maybe twenty thirteen to twenty no, twenty fourteen, no. twenty sixteen. But that it's different because it's like there was a community, but it wasn't like a community this large. Um, it was more of kind of like a standalone group, as many UNSCs were at the time. Um, but yeah, I mean. Yeah, I do. I definitely do enjoy the community here. It's pretty, pretty. It's pretty nice and definitely pretty welcoming in general. Yep, pretty unique in every way. And therefore, as well, there were many groups before that, but actually, there is there is no but. Um, but however, the third question now: What is your position like in IOM? Can you describe it in any sort of way? Right, so I mean, um, so now I would say I've been a. Now, before you start, we're going to have to keep this question short due to the many other questions that would need to follow. Right, no, yeah, yeah, thank, yeah, thank you. I don't want to go off on a long tangent again. I, I tend to ramble, but thank you. Um, no, yeah, being a battle brother is very fun. Um, I, I usually I'm a I'm a I'm a, I'm a devastator marine, so that's the role I play, and it's a special role, but it's fun. You know, you get to. Like spray freaking heavy bolts rounds at chaos and whoever else, and you all, you also get to act as like kind of the tankier version of a heavy weapon specialist and just help out pretty much anyone. 
um, if they just need some suppressor fire. What about what about your other representatives or people who would want to become a battle brother? Do you have any any words for them? Yeah, uh, I definitely want to try and uh, dispel the notion that you need to be like friggin' Sly Marbo on the field of Caldega running around as a commando killing everybody in sight with a uh, a las gun. It's not necessarily the people that we're looking for. Um, obviously, combat skill is important. It's a fact, but we also are always looking for people who know how to work together um, as part of a team. Because individually, Astartes still die. Even together, we still die. But at least as a combined force and as a coordinated, you know, rapid response team to Caudega, that's kind of like our, our purpose. We aim and strive to be essentially good friends and uh, strive to be as coordinated as possible. Probably, I would say, even more so than um, Tempestus. Hmm. All right. Well, that just shows you that, well, there are not so much possibilities to become a battle brother. You always must remember when you're trying to become a battle brother or any of the higher ranks and higher ranks before, always remember your determination and will is all that matters. Surely there are room for pro skill, but it's all within the ears and the mere words that you speak. Alright, and next one. Well, fourth question, actually. What are you going to do in the near future in IOM? Um, well, I recently got promoted to Scout Sergeant, and so um, I'll... I'll do a brief synopsis for people who are unfamiliar with how be becoming an NCO in Astartes works, or especially specifically for Dark Angels. So technically, yes, I am an NCO. I am a brother sergeant, but I am a scout sergeant. So my job is going to be essentially to be the, the NCO, the, uh, the squad leader, technically the sergeant for our 10th company, which always consists of people who are either aspirants or neophytes. Pretty much anybody who first gets introduced into the chapter, they are placed into the 10th company of the Dark Angels. And um, so, um, yeah, uh, that's kind of where my jurisdiction as a brother sergeant sort of like falls to. And so I will be the person, um, whoever's chosen for um, um, aspirancy, I will be essentially your sergeant for the entire process up until the point you reach Battle Brother. And... Um, um yeah so i'm excited to work with um to work with um this new generation this new class of um future battle brothers and it should be interesting and generally uh, depending on how well i do during this technically quote unquote term as a scout sergeant then i will be evaluated by um my chapter and its inner circle and whoever else um that that votes to they will decide whether i should either stay a scout sergeant and do another term or become a full sergeant and move up into um further up into uh, dark angel command so I'm, I'm excited for the next four to six weeks it should be interesting very very well said now i do have apologize for the background audio right now it's a little bit of a little rough i know it was kind of silent for this past while but we will continue with the last question. What do you think on IOM? On, like, everything in general? What do you mean? Everything like, specifically, has, like... Everything that has happened, everything that had made it to rise and... Rise and downfall. What do you think of it all? I think, um... I'll say the Imperium definitely has a culture and has lasted longer than any group I've been a part of. Um, I think what definitely ties some of the more veteran members that are in this group to our, our, uh, the OGs, as you would call them, is that kind of, you know, like that kind of history that kind of ties us all together. Even if you haven't been here as long as like some of our um, custodians. Um, still, a lot can happen in a six month period much less a three-month period. So, like, um, I think a lot of people who end up sticking together and striving through those quote-unquote low points or high points 
it brings them closer together and they just have shared memories and experiences. And, and then it, at that point, it just makes the community uh, and it enriches the community in general in the genre as well. Very incredible. Well, with all of this, this brings the end to our podcast. Thank you for being part of us, Soria. Your service to the Impalement Man still continues now, and we're glad to see you in the near future try to continue them. So, merely, before this podcast ends, do you have any final words for the new and the old comers? Yeah, I mean, uh, I think, I believe, I believe, I believe anything in this group is possible as long as you put in um, the time, the consistency, and you just try to be um, um, compassionate to anyone you meet in general. Like, like, nobody's perfect, but like, try to like, you know, try to help out people because you never know that person you could be helping out could be a future commissar, could be a future good at commissar further down the line. And the, the, the way you treat people early on will speak volume for how they reciprocate the way you treated them later on, further down the line. So you never know. Never look down on a white shield just because you're a white shield. That white shield could be your next, I don't know, friggin' regimental commander further down the line if he sticks with it. So just be kind, be compassionate, and have fun. Enjoy the experience. Very, very well said. Well, that is official end to the podcast. You all have a wonderful day, my dear fellow friends. We have spoken a lot. Now it is time to make an end. Please remember Soria's words and remember these words as you go forward. Fight on for whatever faction that you serve. Make sure that you slaughter or purge any enemy that comes within your way. Truly show your kindness, show your honor, and show your dignity and pride to whoever goes forth and goes further than you. Have a good day, my dear friends, and have a great, great IOM experience. Log end.